Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in my home, Pastor St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you so very much for joining me today as we continue the theme, Don't Waste Your Pain. And from this point on, I hope you will never forget the analogy that I gave you uh, when we started on Monday. And that is God puts the vitamins in the spinach. Now, for the person who loves spinach, well, you don't, it, the, the, the analogy, like all analogies, break down. But for somebody who does not like spinach like me and somebody who calls liver quiver to say that God puts the vitamins in the spinach or God puts the vitamin in the liver, which I did test, is to say basically that the thing that we don't like often ends up being that which is most beneficial to us. How many of us can look back over our lives at something we did not like? It could have been a heartbreak. It could have been uh, a, a relationship that ended somebody that we really liked. And, um, we, we, and we didn't like the fact that the relationship ended. But as the years passed, we look back over that breakup and we say, you know what, at the time, that was the spinach that I didn't like but I ate it, didn't taste good, but I ate it. And there were vitamins in it. In fact, it was the best thing that happened to me. And I'm thankful that God ended that relationship because I realized now that that was not a good relationship for me, that it was a toxic relationship. And I would be in a total different place had that relationship continued. The point I'm making this week is that we all have pain. Don't waste the pain. Let the pain bring about a gain. Let the adversity bring about advancement. Let the loss lift you. And God does that. It's, it's amazing. It's contradictory. It's paradoxical. But God does it. Sometimes the very things we hate are the very things that help us the most. I once heard the story of a little boy who was taking his younger sister uh, up a path and they were out hiking with the family and they decided to take, uh, he decided to lead her up a path. And she looked at the path and she said, this is not a good path at all, big brother. This is a terrible path because it's a path that has rocks and bumps in it. And she's right, it does have a lot of rocks and bumps in it. But her brother said, Sister, it is a great path, and it's a great path because it does have bumps and rocks in it. Because the bumps and the rocks is what we climb on. We step up on a bump. We climb higher because there is a rock in our way. And just like the brother told his sister, the bumps are what we climb on. So it is with life. The bumps are what we climb on. We use the bumps to take us a little bit higher. Now, none of us like bumps. We don't like bumps. We want a smooth path. We, we, if we go to the top, we want a smooth path, but it's the bumps that give us leverage. Now, when it comes to the bumps in life, there can be two responses. There's the bump in your way. One response is the response of resentment. You resent it, and you can tell it in your attitude. You can tell it in your spirit. You're a porcupine. Anyone who gets close to you gets stuck because of the resentment. And then secondly, there is resilience. Resentment or resilience. Resilience says, you know what? Um, I'm going to use this bump on my path up as leverage to climb a little bit higher. I think here's the difference between resentment and resilience. Res res resistance says, or excuse me, resentment says this. Resentment says that this bump that's in my way is a stumbling block. It's a stumbling block. But resilience says, no, it's not a stumbling block. This is a stepping stone to take me higher. One of the things that I like to do uh, is I like to, uh, to read biographies of great men and great women. 
for example, uh, I've read a, uh, a very extensive biography of Frederick Douglass uh, that was written by a, a uh, Yale scholar named uh, David uh, Blight. And it's an extensive, massive book on Frederick Douglass, Yale historian. And what I noticed about Frederick Douglass, in fact, all of the great persons who we celebrate because they rise to the top of the mountain is that they didn't get to the top of the mountain with a smooth path there. They got to the top of the mountain because there were bumps along the way. There were bumps, but they used those bumps in order to climb. They used the rocky path to climb higher, to get them leverage. Now there's a scripture in Psalm 91 and it's a scripture about uh, adversity. In fact, this writer, if you could actually list how many problems he has and how much adversity the writer has, it's about 11 things that are going wrong in his life. Um, 11 different bumps and uh, 11 uh, different uh, rocks that were in his way. And interestingly enough, Jesus quotes this verse. Do you know why he quotes this verse? Or, he quotes Psalm 91 because Jesus had rocks in his way and bumps in his way. And he's going to quote this one of these verses to the devil. And um, this is what it says. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high, that's El Elyon. The, the, those who dwell in the, in the most high God, El Elyon, that's the name for God, shall abide under the shadow of of the un Almighty. It's almost like a hen in which uh, the, the chicks run for refuge under the wings of their mother. And God says, run, run under my wings, come under my shadow, get close to me in adversity. And then verse two, he begins to talk about uh, how God helps him through his adversity. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. I'm going to say it. My God in him I will trust. And just like uh, the great Frederick Douglass and other great biographies that I've read, uh, every person who made it to the top of the hill had to climb over or use bumps and rocks as leverage. That's not only true for great uh, personalities throughout history, but that's true for great biblical characters as well. Psalm 91 is a psalm about a man who probably had more rocks. If you read Psalm 91 it's in, it, in its entirety, it's a story about a man who had more rocks than any person in the world. In fact, you can identify 11 different rocks that were in this man's pathway as he was climbing up the hill to success. He, he's even praying to God. He makes a statement about God, about how God helps us when, as we're climbing up the hill. He says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high God, El Elyon, that's most high, El Elyon, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. And then in verse 12, which is the verse Jesus quotes, verse 11, verse 11 and 12, but especially verse 12, in verse 11, he talks about how God's going to help you with using the angels. We did a whole series on angels, using the angels to help us. And as we're climbing the hill, and let's look at verse 12. In their hands, the angels, they shall bear you up. In other words, you're not going to you're not going to trip over those rocks in your way because God's going to have angels beside you bearing you up, leash you dash your foot against the stone. And instead of tripping, God doesn't want the stones to be a stumbling block. God wants the stones to be a stepping stone. Leash you dash your foot against the stone. So God first of all already knows those stones are there, but God says, "Look, I'm going to let you use the stone." It's right there in verse 12. And Jesus quotes this verse, by the way, when he when he's having his encounter with the devil, he uses this. He quotes th this verse. Uh, uh, and this is the verse. Well, this is the verse the devil quotes to Jesus and he misquotes it. Uh, but anyway, the point being is that it's saying that God's going to use the stones not as a stumbling block, but as a stepping stone. Thank you so very much for being with me for another powerful point to ponder. And look, if you don't have a church home, everybody needs to be connected with the church. 
And I wanna encourage you to contact us here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, New Start at ssclive.org, uh, New Start at ssclive.org. God's blessings and peace be upon you. And until we meet again on tomorrow during COVID-19, please remember to stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. God bless you. See you tomorrow.